the date add function is favorite time intelligence function just more so because of its versatility or really because it's just it's just so, such a versatile time intelligence function you can grab um, you can get you know analyze information from a um, yearly perspective or you can look at your month to date information year to date information but nothing gives you as much flexibility as date add Let's work through a few examples to showcase what you can actually achieve with data. So first of all, the best way to see what you're doing here is to create a table with a measure. So in this case, I'm just going to use total sales. So in this example, it's just a simple sum of the total revenue column. And what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to create a simple slicer that enables me to look at different time frames. So I can look at 2016, 2015, and I'll also, what I'll do is I'll enable uh, multi-selections there. So we're going to look at 2015 and 2016 in this case. Now, using date add, we can compare sales in this case, or any measure or any metric in this case um, that we want, and to, uh, compare it to any time period. So I uh, say, for instance, I want to analyze, well, what, um, what were my sales last year at this time? And obviously we can use the same period last year time intelligence function for this, but we can also do it in dates add. So I just want to show you that first. So I'm going to go, I'm going to call this sales last year. And I'm going to go date add. I'm going to put in the dates column that we have in our dates table. And then I'm going to just add the, uh, the number of intervals. So I'm going to go minus one in this case, and then I'm going to go year. Now that's how you do dates add, but we need to obviously create a different context here for our total sales calculation. The only way we can do that is to calculate. And so your ending function or your ending measure should look something like this, where you've got calculate total sales, which is exactly the same measure in here, but it's going to um, look at a different time period because of this filter that we're placing it inside. So if I push enter and I bring this into our table, you'll see that we don't get any results here because there is no results. So we have to jump down to the very first day of June and you'll see that this actually reflects now um, the very first date where we had data, 1st of June 2014. So just to um, give an example of how that actually works, so if we look at 1st of 6, 2015, it's 1.10. 576.8 is zero. Now, if I jump down to that same day, but I jump down to the next year, you'll see that 110576.80 is the same. Cool. Okay. So now that we have calculated, uh, you know, obviously we can do this with the same period last year, but check out the versatility we have here. If I delete year, we can jump back to any time period whether it's day, month, quarter, or a year. So say, for instance, I want to compare sales versus the same uh, uh, last quarter, the same day last quarter. So I can actually jump back three months, and you'll see that the total the sales, well, this is going to, um, obviously, we might want to not name it sales last year because that can change, uh, but we might want to name it, um, yeah, we can isolate sales um, last quarter, or uh, like we could go sales last month, um, we could uh, also go minus one and go by quarter, like so. And so there's a number of different ways that you can play around with this and it's really quick. So say for instance, we wanted sales last quarter, so we could create our calculation like that. And then we can branch off again and we can say um, difference in sales. And we can utilize that dates add time intelligence function just as an intermediary calc between our two um, you know, our, our, our current sales versus our sales last quarter, and then we, all of a sudden we can get diff different sales. So through dates add, we have this real uh, versatility in our time comparison analysis that we can do. And that's why it's my favorite, it's my favorite term function, because we can very quickly um, see, well, uh, you know, differences in time. You know, and you could also go, okay, sales last quarter, but then we could also go, well, what was sales um, two quarters ago? Two quarters ago. And then all you have to do is change that to two, and then all of a sudden you've got sales two quarters ago, and you could start comparing or doing um, percentage differences between sales now, sales last quarter, sales quarter before, 
and do another quarter. You could do three quarters ago. And it's just so quick and easy. Yeah, you don't have to write a, a complex tire filtering function in here. Dates, dates add does all the all the hard work for you. And then you just don't stop there. You can branch off into a variety of different calculations that you might want to do. You could do a percentage change. You could do difference uh, between time periods. You could even chuck this inside. You can ship. You could place this inside a cumulative total pattern, and then um, and then uh, look at total sales uh, currently at cumulatively. You could look at uh, sales in uh, it's from last quarter cumulatively versus three quarters ago, four quarters ago, so on and so forth. So it's a really effective way uh, to um, you know, figure, uh, look at information over time and, and and get those calculations very quickly. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, Check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.